Welcome back to the kitchen. We just finished up the restoring of the waffle maker. What do you think? I am really excited. It was just this rusted old waffle maker. It looks nice. Isn't it looks it? really nice. It'd be nice to have. It's kind of nice to have two waffle makers, especially if you have a large family, because a lot of folks end up waiting a long time between waffles. But it's well, and for Jack's birthday, every well, not every year, but many years, we've had waffle parties. And this oh, year yeah. we probably made over a hundred waffles. Yeah, uh, we were cooking waffles, <laughs> Wa Nutella waffles all day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we'll do, it, what I've heard, uh, I've read a little bit about these, What if you get the temperature right, it takes about a minute per side. Okay. So you put it in, which, whenever they say that, that means five. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if it's an elevation or what it is. So. Are you, you going to mix this up, some of your famous non-gluten waffle mix? Well, I think you might mix it up while I go put her down. I'll hold the box. I think baby. she's done. I'll hold the box. Baby. Okay, Mrs. W will hook us. Would you look at this? Your favorite thing. Chew on my, my readers. So I've got this good and hot. I'm just kind of keeping it warm. I went ahead and put even a couple more coats of oil on there. Um, so I, th I think it's ready. I think it's ready. So what do you? Uh, what's your favorite mix here? Are you using the Bob's? I am. Bob's Red Mill is a local Oregon company here that uh, stone grinds a lot of, um, well, they do cake mixes, they do pancake mixes, bread mixes. We actually have met several of the folks that work there. We've actually met Bob. We have, and he's given us tokens for free cookies. Yeah, they have a, they have a <laughs> factory store there. But this is really a really good, especially if you're gluten-free and you can't have this sort of thing. Um, it's, I, I, it's, it's as good as any waffle mix that I've ever had. Do you need to add an egg to it, or can you just use water? It says you can use an egg alternative. Uh-oh, I hear the boss baby. She's ready for bedtime. Is it nap time? The sweet loaf is sweet almost all the time, except for when she needs her nap, and that's when she turns into, as we call her, boss baby. Or when she's hungry. So she is starting to make the transition from the sweet loaf to boss baby right now. Oh man, so it's so smoky inside or outside today that we are, we've got the whole house closed up uh, from the wildland fires and we're running our, um, we have these two big HEPA filters so we shut everything down and then run these things 24-7 um, and it makes a big difference in the house. Mrs. W can tell right away if I leave a door open because you can smell the smoke yeah, coming in. I was like, close that door, close it. All right, so what do you got there? You put the eggs in? Eggs, milk. Uh, oil. Okay. And sometimes I add a little maple syrup before it goes in. And what I also uh, like to use is I use coconut, a coconut oil spray, so you can get it, you can get these in a uh, aerosol can, uh, right before you put the waffle in, well at least with our old one, I've never used this one, um, just a very light spray with that coconut oil, it gives it a nice taste and it tends to prevent it from sticking. I think we're ready here, so I'm gonna go with, uh, our range is really hot, so I'm gonna go with a, a medium low. The nice thing I noticed is these have not gotten hot here. Really? Yeah, and that's been, been on there for what, half hour? Yeah, why do you think that is? I don't know. Huh. Um, and also, the other nice thing is it seems to stay, does it stay open? Yeah, I don't know if I'd trust that or not. All right, a quick spray there. Here we go. That's interesting, so they figured out a way to keep that cool. Yeah, same as a wood stove handle. Yeah. I'm going to time this because, all right, so we're quarter after. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm guessing probably about a minute and a half. Minute, it said. One minute? Yeah. That is exactly one minute. We will flip it over and do one more minute. Let's check it out. That's exactly one minute per side. Oh, maybe that was a little bit too long. Boy, it's a big, hearty, nice, textured waffle. Okay, no, I think it's probably right. I think we just had a little bit of, a little bit of black and oil. Let's try that one more time. So one minute seems to be about right. So you always throw the first one away, right? Whether it be pancakes or waffles? No. I don't know why it is. For me, they never turn out quite right. Oh. You know what? Practice makes perfect. What are you doing tomorrow morning? I'm not practicing this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Second one's going to be perfect. Let's try it. How's it look? Delicious. It's definitely a thicker, heartier waffle than our electric 
waffle makers. Yeah, I like I like it this way. It's got more um, crevices for butter, which I I'm not shy about. Yeah. <laughs> you no you needs, taught me that. No one eats more butter in the world than this family. <laughs> Maybe my dad. Maybe your dad. Well, you're going for the strawberry jam. Mm -hmm. Half for jam and half for syrup. Well, there you go. I forgot about the waffle here. I, I'm used to the other one. It's got the little timer on it that chirps when it's time to take it out. That is convenient. Especially because Jack is always stealing her timer. Would you like the first bite? No, you go ahead. I'm going to have my own here in a minute. Okay. What do you think? Is it good? Mm hmm Different than the other one? Yeah, it, it's, um... Bigger. It's bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. Yeah. Mm hmm getting better at this. This one's got this one in one piece here. You think Jack would like a waffle? He'd love a lot of waffle. This is what dive watches with rotating bezels were meant for cooking. I think the majority of them don't see a lot of diving. <laughs> <laughs> I took mine for this for a swim the other day. Oh, well, I waded out into the mighty Pacific with the sweet loaf. Oh, you did. How deep did you go? Your ankles? Not quite. <laughs> it's definitely a big, hearty waffle. This is enough for lunch for me. Mm hmm. It's a, it's a one waffle waffle. Man, if you had some fried chicken on this. Mm. Mm. You guys need chicken. What do you think, mm. if you were to cook it just a little bit longer, would it be crunchier? Like a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Or do you think there's too much moisture in there? Is that why it's softer? I added almost twice the amount of liquid that the recipe called for. Mm. Right, so you know what time it is. It's time for Manly Manners. If you're just joining us for the first time, this is a little book called Don'ts for Husbands, written in 1913 uh, as guidelines uh, for, young for, young for young men uh, and old alike to help them have happy marriages. And I think that it's kind of funny. Uh, it it kind of highlights uh, how, how much has changed uh, over in the last, uh, well, over 100, 100 years or so in relationships, but much of the stuff that we read in here uh, is applicable and some things that we, you know, we don't often need to be told things, as I'm so fond of saying, we often need to be reminded. And Manly Manners is good at that. So I thought we'd bring Manly Manners back. And so in the past, I've jumped all over the place with Manly Manners. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I've got my handy dandy official Wrangler Star pencil here. We're gonna start at number one and we're gonna work, we're gonna work our way through it. And if we come across something that's not applicable, uh, we'll move on to the next one. So let's just jump into page one of Manly Manners. And keep in mind that this was written by a woman, which I didn't know for a long time. All right, so man, Manly Manners, number one, we'll put a little check mark right here so we know we've covered that one, tells us, don't drop cigarette ash all over the drawing room carpet. Some people will tell you that it improves the color, but your wife won't care to try that recipe. Well, I, do you have a drawing room? What is a drawing room? Um, I'll make sure that I do not dump my ashes in the drawing room. Let's move on here. Don't throw cigarette ends Cigar ends, excuse me, into the bowl of water your wife keeps in front of the gas fire. They are not ornamental, and she will not be pleased. Okay, I, I got that. That's number two. We can not make that mistake today. Number three, don't increase the necessary work of the house by leaving all of your things lying around in different places. If you are not tidy by nature, 
at least be thoughtful of others. Okay, so I can speak to this. This is something that I have struggled with, but I have a solution for you, and it's actually quite simple. It's called the rule. It's, it, I made this thing. I made this up. It's this little mind game I play. Uh, it is uh, my three things. When I go to, uh, if I if I walk by someplace, let's say I walk from the kitchen into the living room. What I do, whenever I go from point A to point B, I look around and I put three things away, even if they're not mine. Um, if they are mine, I'll put my stuff away first. And the same thing with my shop. And it's not just the shop, but if I walk over from my main workbench where my vice is, uh, over to the other side of the shop, I'll see something on the toolbox or I'll open a toolbox drawer and there are things in there that don't belong, I won't do, I'll, I'll, I won't do anything to put those three things away. And it kind of runs you in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> that can take, I mean, you can really get carried away with it, but the more, yeah, if you just keep up with this, rather than taking, losing a whole day to organizing your shop and to picking up all of your stuff because you've neglected it all week, what will happen is over a period of weeks and months, things will start to get organized. And if you just do three things, put three things away, uh, it doesn't take very much time. It's, it's a quick, it's kind of a, a life hack that really, really helps. So uh, let's move on. We'll do a couple more here. Don't sit down to breakfast in your shirt sleeves in hot weather on the grounds that only your wife is present. She is a woman like any other women, woman. The courtesies you give to womankind are, are, do, are her due and she will appreciate them. So to sit down in shirt sleeves, boy, this old, this old gal would be spinning in her grave did she knew what I was wearing to break I mean <laughs> shirt sleeves what is sh shirt is that just m meaning you're not wearing a dinner jacket um, that's very formal it, it'd be nice to be a little bit more formal I, I, I mean I, I I know that the gentry back in the day used to dress for meals dress for dinner um, I don't know that I want to bring that back but I think the thing that I, I would take out of this is um, it's for, it, it's easy to become familiar with your wife and with your family and to take them for granted. I know we've all heard this before, but the pr perfect example uh, what, to, to me was uh, when I started teaching, um, I used to teach uh, ski instructor and snowboarding up in Mount Hood, Oregon. And we had, this, uh, we had this rule, this agreement between instructors and it went something like this. You never ever under any circumstances teach your wife or girlfriend how to ski or snowboard. You, you, you trade, like if, if your wife or girlfriend wants to come and learn how to ski, uh, one of the other instructors will take her because for some unknown reason, you become familiar with your loved ones, with your wife and your daughter, your wife or your, or your girlfriend, uh, and you are, it's very difficult to have patience and you get frustrated and you get aggravated with them and you pretty much destroy the whole experience. But on the flip side, that same person that same person, you can have a stranger come in uh, that's someone else's girlfriend, someone else's wife, or just a, a, just a male or female client, and you have all the patience in the world, and, and you're, you're kind, and you're compassionate, and you don't have any expectations. It's really, really weird. And so we can fall into that uh, with our uh, in homes. Uh, I, I know uh, I have to be really careful. I have a tendency to be overly critical um, and, and focus on Mrs. W would do a thousand things for me perfectly. And one thing, you know, to my, she doesn't do to my liking or something. Um, it's easy to, to, to get focused on that and completely miss the big picture. Um, it's just, we have to be careful. You have to be on guard to guard against being overly critical with your loved ones and with your family. Um, I'm the, the chief of sinners when it comes to that. It's, it's something that I, I definitely always struggle with. So um, I think the point that Manly Manners is trying to tell us here is that uh, uh, just because she's your wife, just because she, she's your girlfriend, um, don't um, treat her less, as less of a woman or less important than um, a stranger. Would you um, show up looking the way that you do um, Sunday morning at meals if uh, there was, if you had a special guest coming over? Um, I guess you'd ask yourself. So I don't know that you need to dress for dinner with a shirt and, or with a coat and tie. Uh, I'm certainly not going to, to going to do that. But what it reminds us to do is to just to re remember um, to honor her. Um, and we'll, in, in all things and to at least, at least, at least uh, treat her with the respect that you would treat a stranger. All right. Thanks for, for watching. And uh, if you enjoy Manly Manners, let me know. Give me a, a thumbs up. We can include these at the end of the uh, videos. 
um, and we'll we'll see how it goes. So there we go. We got knocked out five of them. We'll see you guys in the next video.